Here we have two quadratic functions with the variable x, which appears as x squared and x, and therefore it's quadratic. We have a leading coefficient in the first equation, and we can always get to the second by dividing through that a. Now, what we are really interested in is the roots of this equation, so the, the values of x that make this function equal to zero. So both of these are equivalent formulations we get from one to the other by dividing through a and as it turns out the coefficients p and q on the one hand and a b and c on the other are related the way how they are related is pretty straightforward imagine dividing this the first equation by a and then we find that p is b over a and q is c over a so what we want to know is we want to look at the roots and we call that formulation A and that formulation B. Well, the handy formula for the roots of this equation, i.e. for the values of x that make these quadratic functions equal to zero. And since we are looking at quadratic equations, we have two solutions. That's why we have x12 and there's a plus minus in there. Now, let me just state these. Uh, for formulation B, the solution equation looks like this, and actually the one I prefer is a related version of that, where we just reformulate that to P over 2 squared minus Q. Now you just got to know one of those. Okay? I prefer the last, but one of those three you need to know, and then you can solve quadratic equations. But that is, yeah, I, we just assume that you know that here, know one of these formula for the purpose of this video. So what we're going to do next is we're going to establish how the roots, the two roots, potentially two roots, are related to each other. In particular, we want to show that x1 plus x2 is uh, equal to minus b over a and that x1 times x2, uh, x2 is equal to c over a. Before we tackle that particular problem, I should remind you that we will only have solutions here for this quadratic equation if the term b squared minus 4ac, so that's the term inside the square root of formulation a, is at least as large as zero. Otherwise, we would have uh, a negative square root. Uh, we don't really like dealing with those. So, back to the problem. We start by writing out using formulation A, because that's where B, A and C occur. We start by writing out the two solutions. So, x1 is negative B over 2A plus this entire second term, and x2 is negative B over 2A minus that entire second term. And now we continue x1 plus x2. So we'll just write this down, what it is. We'll just replace x1 and x2 with the two solutions. So we have this plus, and now comes x2. Uh, to make sure we put that in parentheses, make sure you don't get the signs messed up, negative b over 2a minus that second term. So now we that big second term appears once with a plus, once with minus, so that will just cancel out, and we are left with negative b over 2a minus b over 2a, that's negative 2b over 2a, and that is of course just negative b over a, which is exactly what we were meant to establish. The second part is x1 times x2, so we'll do the same approach, we'll state x1, which is negative b over 2a plus that second term, and then times x2, which we have here. Oh, there's a parenthesis too many. Let me wipe that away. So, here we go. Now we've got to remember that we have the same term here and the same term here, and the difference between the two parentheses is just a plus in the first parenthesis and a minus in the second. So we know that the solution of this product then is the first term squared minus so that was the straight term, right? Minus b over 2a, and that's squared, and then minus the wiggly term squared. And the wiggly term is this entire parenthesis, b squared minus 4ac square root of 
over 2a. So that's the wiggly term. So now I'm running out of a little bit of space, so I'll have to conserve that. So we have negative p squared over 4a squared, that's the first term, then minus and the square root squared, that means we're just left with the inner part of the square root divided by 4a squared. So we have the same denominator, that's handy. Then in the numerator, the b squared, we have 1 plus 1 minus, so that cancels out. So we are left with negative 4 over 4 times ac over 4a squared. And that will just reduce to negative ca but hang on that actually isn't correct what we need is a plus so where was the mistake it was here we had a negative and a negative so that should have been a plus for ac so indeed that is now correct so here's a problem for you to uh, uh, to test yourself please confirm that x1 plus x2 are equal to minus p and that the product of the two roots of a quadratic equation are equal to q. So pause the clip and test yourself. So how do we tackle this? Clearly we are using formulation b here uh, because that's the one which involves uh, p and q. So here's our quadratic equation b. But recall that um, the coefficients from b and those from r are related. And they're related in this way. p is equal to b over a and q is equal to c over a. And we basically solved that problem already using formulation a, where we established that indeed the sum of the two roots, x1 plus x2, are equal to negative b over a. Now, b over a is the same as p, so that's the same as negative p. So we've established one part of what I asked you to establish, and then the product of the two roots we established to be equal to c over a, now c over a is just q. So that's a very straightforward way to solve that if you've previously solved the other problem. Of course you can uh, start right from the definition of the two roots for uh, formulation b, and you proceed in the same manner as we proceeded in the initial problem and you should find that exact solution as well. You can test yourself with that as well.